Hello everyone and welcome back to the Airfix YouTube channel for another how-to video. This time we're going to be building and painting one of the latest starter set releases from Airfix. It's the 172nd scale Lockheed Martin F-35B Lightning II. This starter set contains everything you need to build a replica of one of the most advanced aircraft in the world, including the parts to pose it with its vertical landing system engaged, which is one of the most incredible features on this aircraft. Being a starter set, you also get glue, paintbrushes, acrylic paints to paint the kit, and this also comes complete with a shadow stand to display your finished model. On the back of the box you'll find the usual full colour diagrams with colour callouts for the supplied acrylic paints. These are referenced in the instruction manual as well as on these diagrams and are for guidance when painting the model. In the small rectangular boxes you'll find numbers which relate to the supplied transfer sheet and these diagrams give you the location where to apply the transfers at the end of the build. The markings supplied with this kit are for an aircraft from 617 Squadron based on the HMS Queen Elizabeth in Carrier Strike Group 21. Inside the box you'll find a single large bag holding all of the kit's components, including large mouldings for the upper and lower fuselage and the frames holding the detail parts. The clear cockpit canopy is kept in its own separate bag inside to protect it from any damage. In a smaller bag you'll find the six Humbrol acrylic paints to paint the kit and there's also a tube of Humbrol polycement to glue the kit together. The ubiquitous Humbrol Airfix brush is divided into two and we now have a size 4 and a size 0 giving us options for detail painting and to cover larger areas much more quickly with the larger brush. The transfer sheet contains all of the aircraft's markings as well as the cockpit details and is numbered in accordance with the diagrams on the back of the kit box. The instruction manual details the full construction process for the model kit and it's important that you read these thoroughly before you start building your model. There's a choice to make between building the aircraft in flight or using its vertical landing capabilities and you won't be able to go back and remove the parts once they've been glued together so to get the most out of this starter set give these instructions a thorough read before you begin. Also included is the before you start guide which covers the tools and basic techniques used to put the starter kit together, most of which we'll cover in this video, but it's always useful to give this sheet a read before you start building your model. Because we're going to be building this kit with just the contents of the starter set, we won't be using a primer, so the kit's parts are going to need a wash before we begin. Washing the kit's parts simply removes any surface contaminants from the plastic and helps with paint adhesion. If you're not familiar with model kits, the detail parts are supplied on frames which are lettered and the parts have small numbers moulded into the tabs located near the parts themselves. This combination of frame and part number is what's referenced in the small round callouts in the instructions. To build the model we'll be using a pair of tweezers for handling detail parts, a pair of cutters for cutting the connection points between the parts and the frame, a modelling knife for trimming away any excess plastic and a file for final cleanup to make sure that the parts fit perfectly. These tools all come from the Humbrol Modeler's tool set. With all of the kit parts washed in soapy water and then left to dry, we can slip on our gloves and get started on one of the most important processes for a new modeler to learn, which is cleanup. We're removing these small pieces of excess plastic which are left over from the injection moulding process. Using the cutters spaced slightly away from the model kit parts to avoid damaging the surface of the model itself, we can simply snip them away with the cutters before switching to the modelling knife to clean up the protrusions which are left behind. The modelling knife has a flat edge and gives us much more control when we're cutting close to the kit parts. This helps to avoid damaging any of the surface of the visible model. After trimming away those pieces of plastic with the knife, we can then switch to the file for the final cleanup. The file will sand the surface of the kit down to flush level so that it fits perfectly with the next part in the build sequence, and that completes the initial cleanup process. The next part that we need is the lower half of the cockpit assembly, and this is trimmed from the frame as before using the cutters, before switching to the knife to clean up the protrusions which are left behind. 
Because this is a curved part, it's best to press the flat of the blade against the side of the fuselage and allow this to guide the knife downwards, as this prevents removing too much material which would result in a dent along the join when the model's complete. After removing the protrusions with the modelling knife, we can then switch to the file for final cleanup and sand everything flush. Once we've got these two parts cleaned up, we're ready to start our first dry fitting and then get some glue on the go and start the actual build. Dry fitting is simply the process of testing the fit without any glue of two kit parts. Here we're checking the lower fuselage and the lower cockpit assembly to make sure we've cleaned away all of the excess plastic that might interfere with the fit. The glue supplied to assemble the kit is Humbrol Poly Cement. This isn't an ordinary adhesive, but rather it's a glue that works by melting the styrene of the kit so that it welds together and forms a permanent join. Poly cement is supplied in a small metal tube, but it does have quite a broad nozzle, which can make it difficult to control if you're new to modelling and you haven't got much experience. One way to get a bit more control over the glue as you're starting out, as we always do in the how-to videos, is to create a small pallet and applicator set using just parts of the kit box, so they're completely free. After cutting away a pallet, we can apply the poly cement to the pallet section and then use the applicator piece to transfer the poly cement from the pallet onto the surface of the model. This gives us much more control over the glue and avoids any excess getting onto the surface which can lead to unsightly marks and fingerprints. Using the yellow areas on the instructions as a guide for placement, the poly cement is then added to the kit parts which are being joined together. In this case a small amount was added to both faces and then the parts were pressed together firmly and held for a few seconds while the glue did its work. With those two parts joined and checked for alignment, we can set that assembly aside to cure fully and move our attention to the upper fuselage. This needs to go through the cleanup process, starting with the cutters to remove any excess plastic, before switching to the modelling knife to trim away any protrusions that were left behind. Finally we can switch to the file again, just to sand everything flush and make sure that no sign of those connection points is left behind. With the glue between the lower fuselage and the cockpit section completely cured, we're able to proceed through the instructions and add the three reinforcement ribs to the lower fuselage. Once the glue on these is cured, we can start dry fitting the upper portion of the fuselage against the lower portion. This is the most important glue join on the whole model and it will be visible all the way around, so it's important that we get a really good fit. After doing an initial dry fit, there were a couple of areas where the injection moulding process had left some excess, so a few passes of the file was needed just to remove these areas. After these had been filed away, the two parts fit together perfectly, so it was time to add the cement. Using the applicator that we cut from the kit box, the poly cement was added to all of the areas coloured yellow in the instructions. This is a big step with a lot of glue to add so we needed to work quickly, but there were some areas where we needed to take a bit of extra care. On areas such as around the cockpit and near the tail, these are thin sections of plastic that we're trying to glue together and there's a risk that when we squeeze the two halves of the fuselage together, the glue may move outwards onto the surface of the model. So in these areas we concentrate the poly cement along the inside face of the model and around the locating pegs. This prevents the glue from squeezing outwards when the kit is pressed together. With the upper fuselage located onto the lower section with the glue added, a quick squeeze with our hands just gets everything started off, and then we can add some clothes pegs which add constant tension to these areas, keeping them together while the glue dries and cures fully. These are just ordinary household clothes pegs straight from the washing line, and they're one of the tools which is called out as being useful in the quick start guide which is included in the starter set. They do come in very handy, particularly when building aircraft, as they hold everything nice and still while that poly cement cures. Once that's cured completely and we've removed the pegs, we've got a nice neat join between the upper and lower fuselage, with no extra glue squeezing out of any of the joins, and we can move on with the rest of the build. The next part to get added are the vertical stabilisers, a little touch of poly cement on the locating tabs, and then these are pressed into the corresponding holes. 
Once both sides have been affixed in the same manner, with poly cement added where the instructions are coloured yellow, we can just take a few seconds before the glue dries fully to make sure that these are aligned. There's a diagram included in the instructions to help show what they're supposed to look like. The first part of the model that's going to get painted is the ejector seat, and we're going to do this while it's still connected to the frame. First we'll cut away the top frame connection point with the cutters, and then we'll cut a small part of the frame itself away just to give us room to work with the paintbrush. All we'll need to do before painting is clean up the excess plastic on the headrest with the file. Before we use the black paint supplied with the kit, we need to make sure it hasn't separated while the kit's been sat on the model shop shelf, so we'll give it a good stir just to get the mixture nice and smooth. After stirring the paint we can then transfer some to the palette, and then we can add some additional tap water. We're going to be using a ratio of about 70% paint to 30% water. This additional water will help the paint to settle down on the surface of the model, it will help the paint level out, and it will prevent any three-dimensional texture. It does reduce the opacity of the paint, meaning we'll have to add two or three thin layers instead of one thick layer, but the overall finish will be much better. Because we haven't used a primer, we're painting bare plastic with a water-based paint, which can lead to some surface tension issues where the paint doesn't seem to want to stick to the model. In these areas, use short fast strokes of the brush to overcome the surface tension, and just try to get that initial paint layer down as smoothly as possible. While the ejector seat is drying, we can switch to number 165, which is the light grey for the cockpit. This particular paint has separated quite a lot while the kit has been sitting, but after a few minutes of stirring with a coffee stirrer, this paint is returned back to its normal consistency and is perfectly good to use. We'll transfer some of the paint to the palette, and again we're going to add about 30% water to the mixture, just to smooth it out to get that initial coat down without any three-dimensional texture. We can then go ahead and add the initial coat of paint to our cockpit. We don't need to worry about colour coverage at this point, we just want to try and get a nice consistent coat of paint down over the whole area. Any surface tension issues that we run into can be overcome with short fast strokes of the brush, and we don't need the colour to look nice and solid at this point, we just want to make sure that we get a nice even layer down, in anticipation of the second and third layers which will build up the colour into a nice even coat. We can now go ahead and apply a second layer of black paint to our rejection seat which is completely dry. You'll see straight away that the second layer covers up the majority of the streaks left behind by the first application, and we start to build up some strong colour coverage. Ensuring that we leave the parts to dry is very important, as we don't want to apply another layer too soon, and lift the paint underneath, as this may cause three dimensional texture to appear in our finish. But what we can do now is basically alternate between the ejector seat and the cockpit, adding a second and possibly third layer of paint to build up good strong colour coverage. Once this is done and we're happy with the finish, we can snip the ejection seat from the frame and glue it into position. Because the connection point for the ejection seat was on the bottom of the part, we can simply snip this away and then file off any excess plastic that might be interfering with the fit. A quick touch of poly cement into the cockpit area is all it takes to hold this in position, and then we can simply push the part into place and the assembly portion of the cockpit section is complete. At this point in the build, we run into the first of the transfers that we need to add to the model, and we're going to put these details into the cockpit. These transfers don't work like stickers, and instead need to be cut from the backing paper using the modelling knife, and then immersed in ordinary tap water for just a few seconds, and set aside to soak. The water will seep into the backing paper, and this reactivates the adhesive holding the transfer down. After a couple of minutes, you'll note that the transfer slides around on the paper under gentle pressure from the paintbrush. This means it's ready to apply. We can prepare the surface of the model where the transfer is going with just a bit of water on the end of the brush, and then we can move the transfer into place. The water that we've put on the surface of the model will allow us to reposition this marking, so don't worry about sliding it into place first time. We can use the back of the modelling knife just to coax it into position, and then either leave it to air dry, or soak up the excess water with a bit of tissue. At this point, the instructions split into an in-flight model and a vertical landing model. We've decided to go with the vertical landing option, so we'll follow the instructions on the pages specified. 
Before we can add any details to the model, we need to start by painting the aircraft in its base colour, and just as before, we prepare the paint by stirring it before transferring it to a palette, and then adding about 30% tap water to the mixture. When painting the base colours over such a large area, this extra tap water is particularly important, as we want this paint to go down as smoothly as possible. Because this is quite a big model, even in 170 second scale, the number 4 brush supplied with the kit is particularly useful to cover this large area as quickly as possible. Even though we're using a larger brush on a larger area, the principles that we applied to the ejection seat and the cockpit still apply, and we're not looking for colour coverage in this initial coat of paint, instead we're just looking to get a nice consistent coat of paint over the entire surface to act as a key for a second and third coat which will build up a solid colour. Because some of the model's surface is quite featureless and smooth, we're painting a water-based acrylic onto a very open area of plastic, and that is going to lead to some surface tension issues. Again, we'll switch to short, fast strokes of the brush in these areas to overcome the surface tension, and we'll just concentrate on trying to get that initial coat of paint to settle down as smoothly as possible. We can now go ahead and repeat the painting process, adding our second layer of paint. Because we're painting over an existing paint layer and not bare plastic, this goes down much easier with no adhesion issues whatsoever and we can simply blast this paint on as smoothly as possible before moving on to using the white paint to paint the wheel wells and the open engine vents. The white paint is prepared in the same way that we've shown earlier in the video, first being given a good stir and then diluted with about 30% tap water. It's important to remember when using white paint that this is a particularly tricky colour to apply to a model, especially when you've not used a primer. The dark grey plastic of the kit underneath will show through quite dramatically in any areas where the initial paint layer is a little bit thin, giving it a particularly streaky appearance that can be quite disheartening. Because we've added additional tap water to the paint, the multiple layers that are required to cover up this streaking won't obscure the details, so it's simply a case of adding more layers of white paint to build up good strong coverage. Once the white paint has been allowed to dry fully, we can apply a third application of our dark grey base colour, and switch to the smaller brush supplied with the kit to create a really neat, sharp demarcation line between the two colours by painting the dark grey right up to the edges of the openings in the underside of the aircraft. By painting from outside to in, we can make the brush fly over the edge without bringing any of the dark grey down onto the white paint, and this just helps to keep everything nice and neat. We can now repeat all of the principles that we've shown in the video up until now on the detail parts which we need to finish the build. We're going to be painting these while they're still attached to the frame, as this prevents us from having to handle them too much, and it helps with organisation as they're still attached to the frame right next to their part numbers. After painting in the white areas and achieving good coverage after multiple layers, we switch to the darker colours to neaten everything up, and edge all of the panels and paint the tyres. After painting the engine components with number 53 and building up a good metallic shine on these parts, we're going to do one extra step which you can apply on other areas of the model if you're feeling adventurous. We'll take some of the number 33 black paint, add it to our palette, and then dilute it with about 80 to 90% tap water to create a wash. When applied to the model, this mixture will find its way into the recessed areas and it will create false shadows, accentuate details, and give it a bit more of a used look. To control the wash on any surfaces that you want to remain clean, simply clean the brush on tissue and then use the brush bristles to soak away the excess wash. Once the engine nozzle has been allowed to dry fully, a bit of poly cement is added in the necessary locations as shown in the instructions, and the nozzle is the first detail to be glued into position. As we enter the final stages of the build, this involves gluing on all of the detail parts to our carefully painted model. It's worth pointing out that poly cement will make short work of acrylic paint, so extra care is required in these stages to make sure that we don't damage all of our hard work by letting the glue get out of control. With all of the open panels glued into place, we can then attach the landing gear. 
The kit is designed with mounting holes that aid straight alignment on these parts, so after adding a bit of poly cement, it's simply a case of pushing them into position and then doing a quick visual check just to make sure that everything's lined up nice and straight. After allowing the poly cement to set fully, we can then edge the detail parts carefully with the dark grey base colour, again working from outside to in to make sure that the brush doesn't carry the dark grey onto the white areas, just to tidy everything up. This process is then repeated on the details on the upper portion of the model, again taking extra care to work with the poly cement near our painted surfaces, and once these parts are glued into place, we can tidy them up with some of the dark grey base colour as well to complete the majority of the assembly. The pilot figure was given a couple of coats of the dark grey base colour from the rest of the aircraft before being treated with a wash of heavily thinned black paint, just like the engine components. Once this was dry, we used a technique called dry brushing. Using the light grey from the cockpit, we filled the larger of the two brushes supplied with the kit and then removed the majority of the paint on some tissue. When the brush is dragged over the model, the raised details will pick up the last little bit of paint left on the brush. We then added some white to the cockpit grey and repeated this step just to create a final highlight. The last little bit of painting required on the pilot figure was just to touch in the pilot's helmet with the white paint. After adding a small dab of poly cement to the ejector seat, the pilot figure was glued into position and all that's left to do now is add the canopy. The canopy was removed from its individual bag and the small lugs of plastic snipped away with the cutters. Any leftover was carefully removed with the file and then it was time to attempt painting the frame. The canopy's frame is moulded in as a raised detail around the edge of the part. This needs to be painted with the same dark grey as the rest of the aircraft, so we'll do this carefully using the smaller of the two brushes supplied with the kit. When diluting the dark grey for this step, it's best to leave the mix a little bit thicker as we want to do this in a maximum of two applications. We don't want to be trying to repeat this tricky process with multiple thin layers. There's no easy way to go about it, we just needed to use a steady hand to follow the raised detail on the canopy and pick out that frame with two layers of dark grey to solidify the colour. If you're new to modelling you might want to skip this step and just install the canopy without the frame painted. Once this had been allowed to dry, there's no glue required on the canopy, we simply pushed it into position and that was the entire build complete, with only one step left to do and that's apply all of the markings. The transfers need to be cut from the sheet with the modelling knife before application and then immersed in ordinary tap water for a few seconds and set aside to soak. When the transfer starts to move around under pressure from a paintbrush, it's ready to apply and we can prepare the surface of the model with a little bit of water just to aid in positioning. The marking can then be carefully slid off the backing paper and onto the model before being pushed into its final resting place using the back of the modelling knife to carefully manoeuvre it into position. When it's in the right place, a small bit of tissue can then be used to carefully wick away the extra moisture and once this is dry completely, the transfer is in position. This process now needs to be repeated for all of the markings on the sheet, following the diagrams on the back of the box carefully and allowing everything to dry fully. And once all of the markings have been applied, that completes the build of the F-35B Lightning II. Building models of modern aircraft comes with its own set of techniques and challenges that may seem quite daunting for the beginner modeler. So by offering a modern subject such as the F-35B Lightning II in starter set format, Airfix hopes to offer the newer modeler the chance to benefit from a reduced parts count and an improved build sequence as an easy, quick way to get started in the hobby and build a replica of their favourite cutting edge modern aircraft. By offering these videos we hope to provide some guidance and inspiration on your journey and we hope you've enjoyed joining us for some modelling today and that you'll join us again as we do more how-to videos in future. So as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you again next time.